Freaks and Geeks is widely considered one of the best one-season wonders of all time. A young, fairly unknown cast coupled with relatable storylines and characters, nominated for 15 various awards and beloved by critics and viewers. Until one day, it was gone. How could a show this beloved be canceled after just one 18-episode season? Welcome to the review. Today, we're taking a look back at the beloved cult classic TV show, Freaks and Geeks. Learn the origins of the show, the cast and characters, along with some rare audition tapes. What made this show so good and ultimately why it was canceled? Leave us a comment with your thoughts on the show. From the mind of Paul Feig, most known for directing shows Arrested Development, Weeds, The Office, Nurse Jackie, and the movies Ghostbusters and Spy. Paul Feig moved from Michigan to California in the mid-80s to develop a career in stand-up comedy and acting. He lived in a house with several other comics, trying to make it in the industry, one of which was Judd Apatow. The two quickly became friends and shared similar interests and styles. Feig wanted to focus his efforts on acting, but by the mid-90s realized his career wasn't going anywhere. His credits at the time included a role on Dirty Dancing, the TV series, The Jackie Thomas Show, and probably the most well-known role on Sabrina the Teenage Witch as Eugene Poole. Frustrated, he decided to take a shot at writing for TV instead. Feig began to write from his own experience in high school. He wanted to write something honest that felt real. A show about high school that would reflect the awkwardness, angst, and disappointment of his own experience. Feig wanted an alternative to teen dramas of the era like 90210 and Dawson's Creek. High school seen through the eyes of the geeks and outcasts. Feig by chance ran into his old buddy Judd Apatow. And while talking shop, Apatow asked if he had any ideas for a new sitcom. Because he had a first look deal with DreamWorks Television. It was one of those right place, right time situations. Feig finished his pilot script, cleaned it up, and sent it off to Apatow. Within hours of receiving the script, Apatow immediately took it to DreamWorks TV. DreamWorks shopped the series to the four major networks. CBS, Fox, and ABC all passed on it. But luckily for us, a development exec at NBC loved the script and pushed for it to be picked up with a handshake agreement that NBC wouldn't change the show. Another right place, right time situation. If they had pitched the series just a few months later, it would have been passed. Judd and Paul wanted to cast mostly unknown actors who looked like normal teens, breaking that standard mold of TV teens. The series focuses its storyline on a brother and sister, Lindsay and Sam Weir, as they navigate their way through high school. Man, I hate high school. Linda Cardellini for Lindsay. Lindsay, what happened to you? Why are you doing this? I'm not doing anything. Well, that's what I mean. Why are you a freak all of a sudden? What, you think it's not cool to be smart anymore? Really, I don't think it's cool to be anything anymore. Lindsay Weir, played by Linda Cardellini, who at this point had appeared in several small roles on television, is a former geek who goes a bit off the rails after the death of her grandmother. Lindsay was the only one in the room during her grandmother's last breath. She asks if she sees the light or heaven, and her grandmother replies no. This event traumatized her and her belief in God. The series follows her journey going from geek to freak, questioning everything she once believed. Linda would go on to have an amazing career, which included roles on ER and Dead to Me. John Daly? So that means she had sex. She's in 12th grade? Yeah. So she had sex in 11th grade. Uh-huh. Sam Weir, played by John Francis Daly, in his television debut is a typical freshman geek. He looks as though he hasn't quite gone through puberty, scrawny and short, dealing with the awkward time between being a kid and a teen. He's constantly in fear over things like drinking, sex, drugs, and bullies. The character was mostly based on Paul Feig, which included the real-life story of the disco jumpsuit. Oh my god. God, I guess Elvis hasn't left the building. Hey, don't make fun of him. That's a Parisian night suit, in case you didn't know. Hey, you guys, a Parisian? Ooh la la. John would also go on to have a successful career, not only on screen, but as a writer on movies, Horrible Bosses 1 and 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, and Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. The freaks include Daniel, Ken, Nick, and Kim. 
Daniel, played by Oscar-nominated James Franco, who in 1999 was fairly unknown to the industry, is the leader and bad boy of the freaks. Lindsay has a secret crush on him, and he's constantly breaking up with his girlfriend, Kim. He's insecure about his intellect, which is an ongoing theme throughout the series. How do you think it feels to be told that you're dumb in ink when you're 11 years old? The casting director is quoted as saying, This guy's going to be an enormous movie star. We should grab him immediately. That's exactly what happened. Franco would go on to have an amazing career in film. Well, I could work my ass off on a freighter like my dad. Or become a farmer. A farmer? What kind? I'd have some corn, maybe some cows, all that crap. <laughs> No, the pot would make me happy. The corn and cows would just be there to, to distract the heat from my main crop. The finest reefer the Midwest has ever grown. Ken, played by Seth Rogen in his acting debut, is the wisecracking, sarcastic type. He just goes with the flow, making his way through high school. 16 at the time, Rogan was discovered in Vancouver. Judd instantly felt Seth would be a star and cast him to get some experience under his belt. Even though the role was small, it was the perfect starting point. Immediately after Freaks and Geeks ended, Judd hired him for his next project, Undeclared. You know, like my drum kit, that's, that's my passion. Well, I don't have a passion. Oh, oh. Come on, everybody's got a passion. You just gotta, you gotta go out there and find it, you know? Nick, played by Jason Siegel, who at the time had appeared in Can't Hardly Wait, Dead Man on Campus, and SLC Punk, is a pothead who has ambitions to be a famous drummer. But his father pressures him to join the army instead. The character was loosely based on Judd Apatow's own experience in high school. Siegel also joined the cast of Undeclared after Freaks and Geeks, probably most known for his role on How I Met Your Mother. Who gave you permission to talk to me, Brian? It can be cool. You were Little Miss Perfect last year, and now you're trying to pretend like you're one of us? Kim, played by Busy Phillips, who was fairly unknown in 1990, is Daniel's on-again, off-again girlfriend. She's tough with a dark past. Originally intended to be a guest star, she became a regular, pivotal character. This is why she didn't appear in the intro or promotional photos. She began the series as a nemesis of Lindsay, but by the end of the series, they became friends. The chemistry between Busy and Linda came from a real place, because they knew each other before getting cast. Busy would also go on to have an amazing career with shows like Dawson's Creek, Love, Inc., ER, and Cougar Town. The geeks include Bill, Neil, Harris, and Gordon. Neil, played by Sam Levine, is one of Sam's best friends. He's witty and dresses sharp. During his audition, he did his William Shatner impression, which was corny and awkward, however, landed him the gig. He was also brought over for the series Undeclared. Hello, I'm William Shatner. <sighs> Tonight on Rescue 9 one, one. My toupee flies off into the face of a small girl. Have you guys ever been in a fight? That depends how you define fight. You know, when two guys hit each other? Hit each other? No. I've been beaten up, though. <laughs> I think we should all fight Alan White. No way. I heard when you fight back, they hit harder. I thought you said you were an expert in the martial arts. Well, I took a karate class at the YMCA once. Bill, played by Martin Starr, is Sam's other best friend. He's odd and loves TV, often quoting lines from his favorite shows. Martin also had a fairly successful career, notably in Silicon Valley and Party Down. Harris, played by Stephen Lee Shepard, is a year older than the other geeks. Sam, Bill, and Neil often go to him for advice. Gordon is the fat kid who stinks due to a medical condition. He was added as a character in the seventh episode. He's kind with a big heart. The show also features a bunch of one-off and secondary characters, which includes Chauncey Leo Party as bully Alan White, Joe Flaherty as Harold Weir, Sarah Hagen as Millie, Tom Wilson as Coach Fredericks, Sean Weiss as Sean, Amy Aquino and Sam McMurray as Neil's parents, and even an appearance by Ben Stiller. 
Writers for the show were given a questionnaire. What was the best thing that happened to you in high school? What was the worst thing that happened to you in high school? Who were you in love with and why? What's the most humiliating thing that happened to you during high school? This is where the majority of the storylines came from. With minimal embellishments or glamour, the stories were told as is. Another thing that made the show feel real was improv. The young actors were encouraged to improvise during scenes, which resulted in real feelings in the moment. They also wanted to mold the characters after the actor's real personality rather than the other way around. The pilot was completed by early spring of 99, and in May, NBC ordered up Freaks and Geeks for 13 episodes. A large portion of the budget was spent on music licensing, which made for an epic soundtrack. The pilot episode aired on Saturday, September 25th, 1999, up against Cops on Fox. The reviews were great, and the show was rated high. Unfortunately, it would only go down from there. Several factors led to the show's decline. The first of which was the hiring of Garth Ansier as president of NBC right after the pilot was finished shooting. Garth didn't like the show and called it depressing. He wanted the characters to have more wins. Garth never attended public school, which possibly could be the reason he couldn't relate to the characters. No matter how hard NBC pushed Judd and Paul to retool the show to make the characters cool with more victories, they stood their ground knowing the series would probably be canceled. It was just a matter of when. Another contributing factor to the low ratings was the inconsistent airing of the show. It aired for two weeks on Saturday at 8, then disappeared for four weeks because of the World Series. Another six episodes aired before disappearing again for two months, only to come back with a new time slot running against the popular game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? All these inconsistencies prevented the show from building a loyal audience. The legacy of the show is still growing today, not only for the show specifically, but the actors as well. The odds of this many practically unknown young actors from one show going on to have big careers is slim. It has to make you wonder if the freedom experienced on set led to their success. They were encouraged to take part in many other aspects of production as well, which was almost like going to film school. Apatow made it his mission to frequently cast these young actors in future projects. You have to appreciate Judd and Paul's integrity. They refused to make the changes, sacrificing their job in the process, putting their craft ahead of their careers, which is a rare thing in the industry today. What do you think? Leave a comment and let us know. As always, thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more videos just like this.